All right, what is going on YouTube? I'm back again. Sorry for being gone for so long, um, but I mean, some of you may know I recently started a newer job, a new med sales job. So I've been just kind of adjusting to that, trying to figure out, you know, kind of the odds and ends of that. Uh, but now I'm kind of, you know, on my feet with it. So I have a little bit more time so I can, I can start making these videos back again. Um, so in this one, I wanted to go over um, rejection in medical device sales, because this is going to be more common than not. You know, you're dealing with physicians, surgeons, healthcare providers that are going to be used to doing things a certain way. And, you know, it's your job from a company standpoint to try and get them to do things your way. So with that being said, there's got to be a, you know, very substantial benefit to having them swap from what they are doing to your method of doing that. So I wanted to kind of go over just a little brief overview of things that you should look for when you're going to speak with them um, that you know might change the tide of the conversation or some talking points that you should have for them. Um, the number one common reason that I see the physicians not wanting to use your issue is because there's no need for the product, okay? Now, just thinking about this globally, you know, in order to usually get your product approved, it has to go through an FDA approval process. They have to clear it for human trials, yada, yada, yada. So there is a need for the product, all right? Or it wouldn't get market clearance. There obviously is, is a certain need for whatever you are selling, but the physician might not see it that way. So you have to figure out sort of the physician need and you have to tailor it to them and why it would be important for their practice. A lot of times I see people just scheduling lunches. They'll just go through data sheets for all their products and then, you know, talk to the physician and see if they want to get it. You know, you have to really tie in the product or what you're doing to the physician need. And that's going to be the way that you're going to be able to build trust with them, which gets to my next point. If you don't have trust with any of these physicians, they're not going to want to use you. You know, they've been using a certain thing for a certain amount of time. And a lot of times that's a long time because they go through these residencies, fellowships, and they're used to doing things a certain way. So if they don't trust you, there's no way that they're going to swap off what they were doing that they've had great results with in order to come to you. So sort of building those blocks of trust along the way is going to be crucial. You know, at first, let's say if you're a hardware rep, you're probably not going to swap a surgeon off what they've been doing for the longest time immediately you're not going to you know, get all their business but a good way to get the foot in the door get one case make sure that you go above and beyond for absolutely everything so that they can trust you um, they get to know you a little bit more and then just make sure that they have everything they need the next time you know make sure to ask them what went well what didn't go well what can i do to improve for the next time for you and that will go a long way you know caring goes a long way in this industry and the other biggest thing I see with rejections is service issues. And this just results to people not caring, patients not getting their devices on time, anything that impacts patient outcomes, because the patients are gonna to go to the physician, not to you. And they're gonna complain about, you know, whatever treatment you've been providing them. So if that physician is constantly getting things in his ear about things not going well, he's not gonna to wanna to use you. But if that patient keeps going to him and is saying, oh my God, like, you know, Matt was great. He did this for me, he helped me out so much. He, he's always a call away. The physician's like that. So if a physician tells you no immediately, don't give up because as soon as you give up, you're pretty much done in this industry. You know, it's, it's your job to get them to trust you and keep coming back and doing all these things. So don't give up. Keep doing what you can to help them and service their patients, even if it's not everything immediately that's going to gain their trust and that's going to help you out so much. So if you get rejection, don't view it as the end all be all. You're going to get rejected more times than not in this industry. So just brush it off, keep coming back, you know, thank them for their time. And then if there's anything else you can do in the future, you know, keep following up once a month, once a quarter, whatever is a good selling cycle for you. Um, and as always, you know, if you want to chat with me or anything, hit me a DM on LinkedIn or shoot me an email. I've been not getting back to as many as possible or as many as I should have in a timely manner just because I've been so busy with this new job shift. But if you do shoot me one, I promise I will get back to you. I'll probably be responding to them tomorrow. So um, just go ahead and leave me a message. Thank you.